Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Stefan, the Facebook Guru, and in this video, I want to show you how to make a DIY printed hardcover for case binding. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already done so, and if you like what you see, give this video a thumbs up. So in this video, I'm going to take you on a step-by-step -step journey, and we're going to learn how to make this printed cover for this text block, and this is a hard cover, so board-backed cover. And the difficulty in making a cover like this arises from the fact that it's printed. If you have a standard fabric or pattern-based material that you want to use for your hardcover books, it's very easy because it doesn't matter to where you put these blocks it's going to always fit because the pattern is the same on the back side but when it comes to printed covers you have to make sure that the board is exactly where the image is and where the spine text is and that's very difficult to do and also we have to calculate all the measurements and the entire template when we create the cover art so in the first section of the video i'm going to show you how to design it how to make the measurements and in the second half of the video, I'm going to take you through the physical process of printing it and assembling it. Now, I'm not going to actually put the book together. I've already made videos in the past where I showed you how to make a text block or how to make a photo book block. And I also showed you in those videos how to attach it to the main cover. So in this video, we're just focusing on making this cover from the design all the way to the actual sticking process. So let's get started. Here's what you'll need at least an A3 size laser printer or inkjet printer, self-adhesive A3 vinyl or bigger, or if you can't get that, then standard paper that's laminated and double-sided self-adhesive tape sheets, two millimeter gray board, a software to design your cover, a sharp knife and a ruler, and the scoreboard. So this is the book block we want to create a cover for. And as you can see, it's quite thick. And the first thing I have to do is take some measurements. The width of my book is 14.4 centimeters. The height of my book is 20.2 centimeters. And the thickness of my book is 1.5 centimeters. Now these are really important to measure correctly before you start designing the cover because if you mess up the measurements, the cover is not going to fit and it's going to look off or even be too small. Now when you have a hardcover book, you, you must have noticed that the cover is always a little bit bigger than the book block to make sure it protects it and it covers it. So usually you would go four millimeters uh, bigger than the actual book block. So if this is 14.4 centimeters, the actual cover would be 14.8. And if this is 20.2, then four millimeters on each side is going to add up to 21 centimeters for the height of the book cover. So we always want to make it slightly bigger and we have to put this into our calculations. So I am in Photoshop now, but you can use any software that allows you to create such a template. And what we want to do now is create the guidelines with our measurements for the text block that we already have. Now, there are lots of ways to do these measurements and calculations. I'm going to show you the way I do it. So what we need is basically three blocks. We need one block for the front, we need one for the back, and we need one for the spine. And what we need to figure out is how long these blocks should be and how much the space in between them should be. The important thing is that if this gray board is two millimeters thick, when you fold it around, it's going to take up two millimeters of the actual cover material, in this case, the printed paper. So we have to account for the thickness of the board. Normally, you would want at least half a centimeter between the two boards because otherwise it's going to be very difficult to open the book. It's going to be very tight. I usually leave a little bit longer. In this case, I'm going to leave 0.8 centimeters. So that means that I'm gonna have six millimeters for the opening and two millimeters for the edge, the thickness of the spine board. So I need this to be eight millimeters, but again, you can make it slightly smaller or slightly bigger. It doesn't matter because we're going to subtract the size of this from that. So both sides obviously have to be equal. Now I have to figure out my spine. Now the spine is very easy. I have to add four millimeters to each side of the text block. So my text block was 20.2 
centimeters. So if I add four millimeters to each side, that gives me 21 centimeters. So this has to be 21 centimeters long and it has to be 1.5 centimeters wide because that's the thickness of my text block. So let's change the measurements for this block here. I'm going to hit Command T on a Mac or Control T on a Windows. And up here we have width and height and they are logged in so I'm going to change this to centimeters so I can see it so this needs to be 1.5 and the height needs to be 21 so I've got my middle bit and now I know that the distance between them has to be 8 millimeters the width of my text block was 14.4 centimeters but I'm adding here an extra 4 millimeters between the space so that my gray board is going to start a little bit further to the right and I also want it to be four millimeters longer than my text block so it covers it nicely. So because I'm adding four here and it has to go four millimeters out, basically it means that the block and the gray board size is going to be the same 14.4 centimeters and the height of course is going to be 21 so the same as the spine. So let's change that to, it's going to be 14.4 and the height is going to be 21. So I've got my block and of course the back one is going to be identical. So I'm going to duplicate it and move it. Now, as I said, the distance, I want it to be eight millimeters. If I move this block right against the spine and I start moving it slowly, it's gonna show me how far they are from each other. So I want it to be 0.8 and then the other one is going to lock into the same size. So I've got my design here. So this is gonna be where the design goes, but you have to remember that you have to fold this paper around the gray board, so you want to leave some bleed. Now for the folding, I like to leave at least an inch or an inch and a half. I'm going to start creating my guidelines. I'm going to center this nicely onto my A3 sheet and I'm going to add my guidelines. Now guidelines can be just dragged down from the ruler. So I'm going to drag one here so I can see that's where my design ends. One to the bottom, one here, one here, another one, another one, one to the edge, one to the end. And now I'm going to add some visible guides for myself so I can see them when I print it out. So I'm going to come to my pen tool and I'm going to create a new layer and I'm just going to add some lines going from here. One, two, it doesn't matter if they are longer or shorter as long as we can see them. And three, I'm also going to add one here so I can see where my book has to start and another one here. And I'm going to add a horizontal one and I'm going to add another one here as well. So now I've got my guidelines. So when I print it out, I actually know where I need to go with my design. You can do this in the bottom as well. It's really gonna depend on the method you use to mark your paper. I'm just going to do the top, but it's wise to do it at the bottom as well. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to design quickly the cover. So I'm going to leave the back blank just for now. And for the spine, I'm going to add the title. Let's add test hardcover book. I'm going to rotate this, move it to the center here. Now I'm going to change my text settings to centered. I'm going to make it bigger. Yeah, that's fine. And make sure it's in the center both ways. So Photoshop is very good at centering things. So that's gonna be just my spine text because obviously I have quite a lot of space for the spine text. And for the front, let's add a nice picture. And what I want to do is make it smaller and I'm just, I just want to kind of position it in the middle. There we are and let's crop it. And this is just for demonstration purposes. So ignore the design of the cover and I'm going to crop it here to, to the guidelines. Now remember, your book starts at the crease line, not at the second line. And since we have to fold this paper around the gray board, we have to make sure we've got some bleed on the outside of these lines so we don't end up with white lines on the front. So I'm going to make this slightly bigger and move it down. Yeah, so it looks like a lot of bleed, but it's not so much and it's better to have slightly more than less when you make your first book just to make sure you're not wasting paper. And I'm going to remove this background because I want it to be white. 
So I have my book cover, it's extremely simple, one photo on the front, nothing on the back. Obviously if you want a photo to go all around the book cover, you can make the photo big enough to cover the entire cover. Now let's print out the design. Now when it comes to printing, obviously it's one of the big components of making this cover, I'm using a Xerox A3 laser printer. The paper that I printed on is a self-adhesive, flexible kind of vinyl sheet. So it's not paper because it is flexible so you can stretch it, which is really important because a book is going to be stretched, especially when you fold it around the gray board. This paper is not very easy to find. It took me a long time to find it. As you can see, it peels off. So you can just stick on the boards and it's very clean and mess free. It comes in A3 and A4 size, so you kind of limit it to the size. And it also has a, a waterproof finish. So if you print on it with a laser printer, you don't need to laminate it. Now, if you can't get this specific paper type, you can also print on non-self-adhesive paper and you can use a double-sided self-adhesive sheet to add it to the back of the paper and then you can glue on the uh, boards, which I'm going to show you later on. But I would not advise using PVA glue when it comes to attaching paper to gray board because the glue might bleed through and you might see some wet marks on the other side of the paper, especially if it's not glossy, if it's a matte paper. So Finding a good self-adhesive vinyl sheet is going to be the best for the covers, but you can also print on regular paper and use a self-adhesive backing on it. Make sure that the paper is not too thick because it's going to be very difficult to fold it and it's also going to be less flexible and it's going to add a little bit of error to your measurements. So it should be uh, fairly flexible and thin in order to make for a good cover material. Now, as I mentioned before, if you can't find a self-adhesive paper to print on, or if you can't find it in the size you need to, or if you printed out your cover at a print shop and you still need to stick it. So let's assume that this is a regular standard printing paper that our design is on the back side and it's not self-adhesive. These are called self-adhesive double-sided sheets or tape sheets. And basically this looks like a standard piece of paper, but both sides can be peeled off. And if you peel off one side, you will stick that to your paper. And then when you're ready to glue it, let me actually show you the process. So I'm gonna peel this off. I'm going to stick it here. Obviously I would need to cover the entire surface. And then when I'm ready to stick on my gray boards, I'm going to simply peel off this back layer as well. And now this is self-adhesive on the back. So it's a double-sided self-adhesive sheet and you can use this if you can't find any self-adhesive paper to print on. Also it works if you want to use an inkjet printer but please bear in mind I would advise to laminate inkjet prints to make sure the print doesn't get smudged or damaged by moisture. The next step we need to do is cut the grey board that we're going to use for the rigidity of the cover. Now this grey board here is A4 size and it's two millimeters in thickness. You can buy this from many, many places, including Amazon. I'm going to add some links into the bottom, but get it from the closest place next to you. And we need to measure out the size of the blocks that we calculated in our cover design process. What you want to do is measure out, in my case, it's going to be 14.4 by 21 centimeters. So I'm going to draw a line 21 centimeters and then 14.4 and then do the same on the other side and then cut it out. Now in order to cut this out, you can use a, a cutter, a sharp knife. Don't use scissors, it's going to break the, the board. These knives are the best for cutting gray board. Make sure it's nice and sharp, use a ruler, hold it firm and make sure the two, the back and the front cover are exactly the same size and cut out your three pieces. Now I've already cut out my pieces. Here is my front cover, my back cover, and here is my spine. So these are all 21 centimeters. And now I'm ready to assemble my cover. This next step is one of the hardest because we have to create some kind of guides to actually see where to put the boards. Now there are machines which are capable of doing the folding process, but they are really expensive and you might not want to use them for a DIY project. 
If we use just a plain fabric cover, it doesn't matter where we put the board because the pattern is always the same on the other side. However, when we use a printed cover, we have to make sure that the board is exactly in the middle of the photo. But how do we know that if we can't see the backside? of the print. We can use an amazing scoreboard like this one and put some faint groove lines onto the print. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put two crease lines to the spine. I'm going to draw one on the right side just like that and I'm going to do one for the other side as well to make sure that I can see where the spine starts and where it ends. I'm basically just lining up the grooves with these printed uh, black lines to make sure they're in the right place. I'm going to put one to the back as well so I can see where the board has to finish. There we are. And I'm going to put one on this side as well. And I need to put one really long at the top so I can see how to align my three boards to the top of the page. And the good thing is that because these are crease lines, once the cover is folded over, you won't see these unlike if it was a pencil mark, which you couldn't see on the back side anyway. But now you can see on the back that these crease lines are going to be visible even when the backing paper is peeled off. Now that I've got my groove lines, I'm going to attach my boards. I'm going to peel off one side first to make sure I'm not sticking to everything. I'm going to start with this left side and as you can see, I can still see the groove lines even after I peeled off the backing paper. And now I'm going to attach this grey board exactly to the two guidelines on the left and top side. So make sure you've got good lighting to be able to see the guidelines, otherwise it's going to be off. And that's one, I'm just going to press it down a bit to make sure it sticks really well. Now instead of putting on the middle bit first, I'm going to peel off the right side and put that board on first. Super easy, no glue and no mess to clean up afterwards and also you don't need to wait for the PVA glue to dry. That's it, making sure it lines up perfectly. And now I have to attach the middle spine bit and I have to make sure it's equidistant from the two other boards so it's exactly in the middle. So I'm going to put down the top bit first it's getting really sticky already, uh, just making sure it's right in the middle and there we are. That's it, I've got my three pieces, all I need to do now is fold over and trim, so let me get my cutting board. Now one thing you want to do before you start actually folding over the cover is add two strips of plain paper, scrap paper, whatever you want, in these grooves in between because they are quite sticky and it might stick to your book or it might stick to the edge of the grey board. So I cut these down to the exact size of the, of the gap between the grey boards and I'm going to insert it right in between to make sure that my cover is not going to stick to anything. So nicely fitting it in, one on the right side and I'm going to do the same on the other side as well. And now it's not sticky anymore, so it's going to be easier to work with. Next step, sharp knife. And now I'm going to cut these corners. Now, what's really important when we cut these corners is to leave a little bit between the corner and the cut line. Because once you fold it over, you don't want the corner to be exposed. So leave at least two, three millimeters from the corner to the edge of the cut line. I'm going to do this to all four sides now, so uh, second side, next one, and the next one. All I need to do now is fold it, so I'm going to press it down with my fingers and stick it and fold it. And when I fold it, I have to really press it down strong, and I'm also going to stretch it a little bit to make sure it's nice and tight pushing all the bits, flatten it down and make sure it sticks really well. I'm going to 
uh, fold in the corners at the edge to make sure they don't stick out. I'm gonna do it on the other side as well. Now do the same on the bottom side, press down, fold in, and finally I'm going to do the shorter sides at the end. Pull, fold, pull and fold. And our cover is ready. The last thing I want to do, I'm going to take my rings off for this to not damage the print, is to flatten it down to make sure with my hands to push it down really strong so it really sticks to the paper on every single square inch. And obviously if you used a an inkjet printer, make sure that you are laminating it before you do this, otherwise the print might smudge. That's the book cover ready now, and as you can see, the bleed was enough to go on all three sides. It's a little bit shorter on the bottom, but the main thing is that I didn't end up with any white lines on the front, so my picture looks nice and full bleed. The text on the spine is also right in the middle, so perfect. And the moment of truth, let's see if our text block fits in. So as we can see, it's a perfect fit on all sides and we've got that little extra four millimeters on the top, bottom and on the sides to make sure that the cover really protects the book. And all I need to do now is add a double-sided sheet to the front and to the back and use that to attach the book to its cover.